Hey everybody, Joy here. It's Tuesday, May 24, 2016. Aren't you proud of me? I just rattle that off just like that. That's because for once in my life I remembered to look at the calendar and see what day it is. I'm making this video to introduce some of you quilters out there. I can't imagine that you quilters don't know this lady. But um, Diana texted me a while ago and said that uh, she and her mother-in-law were going to Antlers, Oklahoma today. And that there's a quilt shop in a barn there. I don't remember the name of it, but um, I told her that there's also a lady named Irina Bloom that used to live there, still lives there, or lives there and someplace else like I do. <laughs> but her name's Irina Bloom. And um, Diana said, oh my gosh, she's probably one of your readers. You should go there and you should meet her. And so I texted Diana back and I said, no, 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 no. This lady's a famous quilter. So this is for Diana and whatever else, however other many. Did I say that right? I probably need some more coffee. You guys wait. However many other <laughs> of my quilter buds don't know about this lady. I want to tell you about her. She's absolutely adorable. Her name is Irina Bloom, B-L-U-H-M. If you Google Irina Bloom, she has a website, it'll come up, you can see all about her. I believe she's from Poland. She has a real fun accent, but she speaks excellent English. And I think she started out um, buying a gamble um, from Linda Taylor. And I think that maybe she started doing some classes with Linda Taylor or something years and years and years ago. But she was so, so good. And she came up with all these quilting designs on her own, mainly background fills. And then she started this unique, I understand there's a lady in Australia that does it too, but Irina Bloom started it not knowing about the lady in Australia, where she quilts a piece of whole cloth first, usually white, she totally quilts it with the designs in it. Then she takes it off the long arm, already quilted, and she gets out her colored pencils and she colors the entire quilt in, okay? So, back in the days when Philly and I were running around together everywhere and taking classes together, Philly and I both took one of her classes in Kansas, someplace in Kansas, Kansas City or someplace in Kansas where they had that quilt show. So, I was gonna show you my two samples that I made up to take and do in her class. And then you'll see how horrible I was at it and how very little I got done. <laughs> okay, here's one of them. And I hope that the light will show enough. I may have to turn the lights off. Let me see, where's the front and where's the back? Goodness, that binding's so good I can't really tell. I think this is the front of the quilt and you can see it is completely quilted it's a heart with quilting all around the heart and a ribbon going all the way around it and it's white front white back white binding and the idea was to take her class and learn how to color it in <laughs> okay so I made two of these samples this was one of them here's the other one that I actually took to her class and got all my colored pencils out and my sharpener. So where was I? We were in her class and then she had a little desk that you could sit at and color on and Philly was next to me or behind me or something. I mean, we were like stuck like glue back in those days. And um, I don't think Philly got a whole lot farther than I did, but it was so much fun. You know me, I love crayons and pencils and erasers and sharpeners and little zipper bags you put them all in. So I was like, if all I get to do is carry my pencils around, I'll be excited about this class. Okay, so this quilt, what did I quilt on here? I quilted a flower with some leaves and a whole bunch more leaves and a ribbon in the middle. And so you can see how very little I got done coloring this quilt. And Irina teaches you how to shade it and how to make parts darker and how to, um, I think there was some kind of a, um, it's not paint, but it, you buy it with the paints and it's some kind of, um, oh, I don't know what to call it. Uh, you mix it with some water and then you brush it on after you color your pictures and it makes them stay like forever. And it's some kind of medium 
texture medium or paint medium or something. I don't know. It's been a long time, you guys. Like, maybe eight years ago. <laughs> but I love Irina. Before I went to that class in Kansas with Philly, I took a class in Plano from her. And um, let me see. She was teaching us how to do quilt designs then and on a long arm. And she had her gamble there. And she was showing us how to quilt. And um, she had her personal quilts hanging at that show. Oh, my goodness. Someplace in my computer, I have some... Um, copies of those quilts. If I can find them, I'll put them in my blog today. But oh my goodness, this woman must go through colored pencils like I go through coffee. <laughs> it's unbelievable how much work she does. So anyway, one more thing I wanted to tell you guys. Okay, if you happen to be an applique type quilter like I am, I have done piece quilts. You see my piece quilts in this room. But I don't know, for some reason I'm drawn to applique. And so I'm doing Butterfly Dance by Dar Darcy Ashton. Darcy Ashton, not Darcy Ashton. <laughs> what are y'all are, 65? All right. So I'm doing Butterfly Dance. But what I wanted to tell you about Butterfly Dance, and look at this. Did you know she has caterpillars in here? Are those cute or what? On her quilt, she has like half butterflies and half moths. Well, I don't like moths. I don't want any moths on my quilt. I only want butterflies on my quilt. Another thing is, some of her designs are very, very simplified, like this one right here. See how simplified it is? And fortunately, this question one, this one's called the question mark butterfly. You wouldn't believe what that guy looks like in real life. So some of these things are just a little too simplified, and I understand Darcy has to do that because a lot of people applique by turning the edges under and then hand stitching all the way around it and if you have a lot of points and little tiny tails and little tiny feelers and little tiny things like that it's hard to fold them under and quilt them but I don't quilt that way I quilt by cutting the thing out as it actually is gluing that sucker down and then zigzagging all the way around it with a tiny little zigzag as you know so I have really found out a lot about butterflies this last week I, fortunately, Darcy has put in here what they're called. This one's called the Guava Skipper Butterfly. This one's called the Ulysses Butterfly. So I go to my computer and I Google Ulysses Butterfly. And the butterfly comes up and it looks so much, well, it's kind of the same shape as what Darcy has, but you can see the detail in the colors and the stripes and the dots and the variations and things. And so I will print out a colored picture of the one. I wonder if I have any of them here I could show you. Hold on just one second, ladies. That one's too light colored. You won't be able to see it. Here's one. This one's called the tiger butterfly, okay? Now, this is Darcy's tiger butterfly. Okay, I googled tiger butterfly and made a copy of it and this is what the tiger butterfly actually looks like. Okay, you see the deal? So I want my tiger butterfly to look like this. In a second I'll take the uh, camera off the tripod and show you what mine looks like, okay? Let me see if I have another one here. Yes, here's another one. This one's called the postman butterfly. Now. Her postman butterfly is this black one with these two round dots. Here's the actual postman butterfly. Okay guys, here's a real quick clip of my tiger butterfly finished on the quilt top. And here is a picture of my, now they don't have their feelers yet, because I've got to still put those on. And this is the postman butterfly, okay? So you can see that my butterflies are pretty detailed. This one's called the dog face butterfly. I looked it up and it actually does look exactly like that. I copied it. Now, I'll tell you something that I'm having to do that, you know, if you're as nutty as me and you like everything so perfect, um, I'll tell you about it and then you can do it. The problem with taking the image off of real life butterflies is real life butterflies don't put themselves down <laughs> totally flat like they smashed against your window <laughs> on a plant and so one wing may be up one wing may be down one wing may be a little bit tilted or something 
So, these butterflies are like perfect on both sides, mirror images of each side that we're doing on this quilt. And I'm pointing to it because it's on the floor. And um, so I found out a way to make the butterflies look like they're smashed under a piece of glass. What I do, and you can see here, well, you can't see here, but this is actually two wings. This wing, and then I've taken this wing and flipped it around and made a copy of it. And so then I printed out these two wings and stuck them together on the paper. And then I put the body in the middle. This wing, and how cool is this butterfly, you guys? Now, this butterfly isn't even in the book. But when you look up any of these butterflies, there's usually a thousand others all around it. And stories about, oh, do you know they only live like a week and a half from egg to the butterfly dying? It's unbelievable. They're just amazing things, these butterflies that God created. But first of all, I did that, cut them out, taped them together. This time, this is the Kaiser butterfly. And you know who's Kaiser, don't you? Terry. Terry's maiden name is Kaiser. And when we all got together, her sister Sherry made me a Kaiser shirt, remember? Well, I found this butterfly just floating around with one of the others I looked up called the Kaiser butterfly. And I showed it to Terry yesterday. I said, oh my gosh, I have to make a Kaiser butterfly for Mama. And so I asked her when Mama's birthday was. And she said Mama's birthday is July the 5th. So I'm going to make her a mud rug with this Kaiser butterfly on it. Now, Mama could actually make her own. She knows how to sew. She used to make a bunch of clothes for the kids and everything. But she doesn't anymore, so maybe she'll like a mug rug if I make her one. And then I'm also putting this guy in my butterfly quilt. Now, it's not in Darcy's book, and it's not in Darcy's quilt. I'm going to have a bunch of new butterflies on mine because I'm not doing any of the moths. I am doing the caterpillars, so how cute are they crawling around on the sashings? So anyway, um, this time I don't have two different wings. My lightning fast mind <laughs> figured out I could copy one half of the butterfly, cut it off, flip it over, and stick it on the other side, and then make a print. And if you notice in the middle, his body in the middle is all screwy looking, but I don't care about that. I can cut out his body later and stick it to the two wings. But now both sides are exactly the same, and I can cut this butterfly out for my quilt. So anyways, a little tip for you there if you're into applique. I love applique, as you know. So I have to go. I have lots of butterflies and caterpillars to make. So y'all have a really nice day. Bye!